Welcome to another episode of Vision Angling. So tonight I've come down with myself and George. Hi guys. We've brought ourselves down to a mark called Portlock Weir. So yeah, we are brought ourselves down to the Bristol Channel, Portlock Weir. Uh, we're going to fish the low water down, we've got a low tide about half past ten. So we'll fish it down and hopefully fish it back up a couple of hours. Um, target for us tonight really is cod. A chance of uh, us and a couple of conga maybe as well. Yeah, that's it. So it'll be, uh, it's pretty much, it's a new venue to us. So we've come down and everyone sort of said, you know, you've, you've got to hit range and stuff like that. So we're trying to wax the smallest baits out. We haven't had to go on to no rotten bottoms or nothing yet. We're, we're out on the clean ground. I say we're just being inundated with dogfish. I say baits are hitting the water and immediately they're pulling down, no matter what bait we've put on, they've absolutely hammered them. I say we're uh, well into the numbers now with dogfish. So, yeah, what rigs are you using tonight, George? Um, I'll be using short pulley rigs and uh, what two up loop rig out with uh, worm baits on, hoping for that cod. Uh, so, yeah, pulley rigs, got short up and over as well, with the bigger baits on. What about yourself? Uh, I'm using some pulley droppers and some short pulley panels. I say the pulley droppers I'm putting in shorter and shorter, trying to find where the rough ground starts. But I say we'll, uh, we'll wait and see, hopefully, get some big baits out when that flood starts, and we'll uh, try and find some other fish, won't we? Yep, so hope so. Brilliant. Catch Cheers. up with you in a bit. So, guys, um, just pulled in the third cast now on a two-hook loop rig. Bait with blow lug, so I'm out there fishing for cob with that one, and uh, not the target species, but it's a fish. Nice little rocklin. Um, don't know if you can see that on there. Slimy little thing he is, but he's been out for a little while now, so I'll get him back. Cheers. Right, well we've been plugging on now, chucking the baits out, just approaching the bottom of the tide. I say we just cannot get past the dogfish. I say George has had a little rocklin, but it's absolutely teeming with them out there. Blow lug baits. I mean, I put double sand eel, whole squid, mackerel head. Every single one of them is bringing back in a dogfish. So I'm going to keep persevering. Hopefully, the flood brings in a few more decent fish. It's a nice little beach, to be honest. I say it's the first time. Both George and myself have fished here, and uh, it's quite good access to be fair. I mean, anyone that's looking to fish, fish at any of the channel marks and stuff like that. I say we are at Porlock Weir, and you've got the uh, the cottages in front. We're probably a hundred yards to the left. Um, and I would say, to be honest, it's, it's, it's at the bottom of the tide now, and I've just cast one out a minute ago maybe 60 yards and it was still on clean ground so I mean anyone that's looking to come down here you could fish this spot you don't have to be you know an expert angler if you fish in this little area here it seems to be seems to be pretty clear ground we're fishing quite a uh, quite a nippy west southwest wind today and it's, it's positioned absolutely lovely. It's, it's coming off our backs. It's a very, very comfortable evening. I say, but I think if I was to come here again, I might go slightly further up. Because uh, I put one, I walked up quite a way to my left earlier on. There's, there's a chat probably about 300 yards up to my left. I walked probably half that way, whacked one out brought all the way back to the stand and I was still on clean ground up there so you should imagine if you're fishing bottom of the tide here it's not too much of an issue but they do say that the point more up up towards the point is quite quite snaggy and really sort of broken ground so you know prepare to obviously lose some leads if you do go up that far high tide I mean if you were fishing high tide here I would definitely recommend definitely recommend rotten bottoms because it is quite a chuck from the top but yeah it's a very very nice mark and hopefully you all come down and uh, give it a go yourselves right guys 
I just had quite a positive bite on uh, my turret loop rig. I got quite excited because I lifted into it and it felt like a good fish. Uh, say that one I'm fishing with blow lug, so I'm aiming for a cod all the way in. I even felt a little nod, but double dogfish culprits, like Ben said. These are starting to become a bit of a pain now. But we're going to persist through fish hard and hopefully we can get back to you some better fish. Cheers. Right guys, unfortunately on that cast a minute ago I was uh, I was in quite a lot of rough ground winding it in. As we've seen earlier on I had another dogfish and I could feel it coming through the snags all the way through. So I've just cut my shock leader off, I'm going to tie on a new shock leader. Obviously here I'm using 60 pound Daiwa J braid and I'm going to tie that to some 80 pound shock leader. I'm going to quickly do the FG knot, just for those of you that sort of want to use the braid and that and think it takes forever to tie on the beach we'll just quickly uh, quickly tie it up just so you can see it doesn't actually take that long right so you want to get a little bit of tension coming off of your rod on your stand and you start off put it shock leader leaf underneath there go over the top and up and around and down pull it tight and just go under and up and then just repeat that about 20 times make sure that you pull it and pinch the knot as you go One more. And now you can see there, there's your FG. Just get some braid scissors. Just cut off the tag end there, probably about nine inches or so. And all I'll do there is I'll do a quick granny knot. over both give that a little pull down so that will be your knot there and I say at that point this is the point now where we're going to wet it and give it a good hard pull And what you're looking for is that knot there. It's gone all sort of transparent. You can see that. And that is. I physically can't pull that any harder. And all I'll do on the end of there is just do a quick risotto knot. So we'll make a loop, make sure you go over both. So you go over your tag end. And your main line. Give yourself a loop there. And then go through. Five times. Bring that down a little bit. And 
and what we want is your tag end along the knot there and then all you have to do is reverse the loops make sure you keep it quite tight on the end near the knots until you're done there and then that that's your focus that's your finished knot and all we'll do then Cut the tag end, make sure you leave a little bit on the braid there. Helps if you've got some really sharp scissors. Then what I like to do is this end here, cut it off right about there. And then what I like to do is get a lighter. Make sure that you wet your fingers a lot. Ooh, ideally not after baking up. And the end here. And that there is completely finished ready to go out. Cheers. Alright, so I've just got a bait ready there. One of the baits I'm putting out today, you can see, we've got a double sand deal and mackerel bait. Sakuma Manza Extra in a 4 0 with Sakuma Top Gun in a 5 0 for the panel. Perfect little bait. I'm going to whack that one out into the tide. That's ready to go. One little thing now the tide is flooding quite hard. So it's uh, starting to run quite a lot. And if anyone's like having problems with your grip leads running and stuff like that, I say take a bit of bait elastic. A lot of the guys use elastic bands and stuff like that, but if you haven't got any elastic bands at hand, just whip some bait elastic around there. And as you can see there, that's going to hold on. And that will, I say, that will not come out. And I mean, anyone that uses these leads know that they can pull out quite easy. But that is not coming off now. So we're not going to have a problem with that running in the tide. It's going to grip down quite nice. So we're going to get that right out onto the clean ground. Hopefully pull some out on that bait. Right everyone, so uh, as the tide started slacking off, so did the fishing really. I was struggling for bikes up my end. I Ben was having a couple of little ones down here. But um, I managed to miss one just a minute ago and pulled my rig back in until it had been uh, mangled by a strap eel. And then uh, all of a sudden my other rod jumped into life. And uh, as the tide started to flood again, the dogfish seemed to be feeding again. Not what we were after, but a fish is a fish at the end of the day, I suppose. I'm going to keep plugging on for a little bit longer now. I mean, the tide's only just started flooding, like I said, so we'll probably give it another hour or two fishing here and then uh, see how it goes. Cheers.